Good morning everyone and welcome to this very special Cosmic Kids Christmas snippet from my home to yours. I want to wish everyone a Merry Christmas. Worship with us this morning. Under the tree, jingle bells ring a ring. But I know, oh, I know, yes, I know, there's more for me. So much more to believe. Carols in harmony, silver lights twinkling. But I know, oh, I know, yes, I know, there's more for me. from my home this morning. 
I hope you enjoy the view of the Christmas tree. Everybody knows Christmas is one of my favorites. I enjoy celebrating. I enjoy the decorating. I enjoy making cookies and the goodies. I enjoy getting gifts and giving them to people. I just love being able to give and, and bless and, and to do all the things that we think about at Christmas time. Well, unfortunately, we can't be together this morning, and I know that that may be a little disappointing. Well, it's not a little disappointing. I know for me, it is very disappointing. And I was so disappointed that we were not able to have our Christmas program last week, that we weren't able to have our Grinchmas Christmas party, and we didn't get to have this morning our in-class Christmas party. So everywhere you look, it just kind of looks like this one little word is showing up. And it's not a little word, it's kind of a long word. And I want to talk to you a little bit about that this morning, and it's called disappointment. I know it's a big word. Maybe you've heard it. If not, do you know what it means? Does anybody know what disappointment or to be disappointed? Well, it kind of means to be let down, to be discouraged when something maybe didn't happen the way that you wanted to, and we all face disappointment. For me, it was really great this year facing the disappointment because we didn't get to do the things that I so desperately and just greatly wanted to do for all the children. So that led to disappointment. Well, as I was praying because we had to figure out what are we going to do now? We can't have in-person um, worship and class and what can we do? And so I've been trying to, to be creative and think of different ideas to do. And I just kept feeling more and more discouraged and disappointed. So I just began to pray, which is what I should have done first. But sometimes isn't that the last thing that we do? So I went to the Lord and I just kept feeling like I needed to speak to you this morning on what it means to be disappointed, what it means to be um, discouraged or let down. And many of you, have you ever felt that way with something? Maybe even it was at Christmas time. Maybe you didn't get the gift that you wanted to get. Um, maybe you're finding yourself very disappointed right now because you can't be at school with your friends. And so that's made you feel very disappointed. Well, we all face disappointment. In fact, the Bible even talks about it. Jesus never said that life would be easy and that it wouldn't be difficult, but it does say in John chapter 16, verse 33, and it says, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world, you will have trouble, and disappointment is trouble, isn't it? But take heart. I have overcome the world. And I know many of you may be like me, or some of you may just say, hey, it is what it is, and life goes on. Maybe some parents out there have been discouraged. Maybe you've been very disappointed in the way that this year is going, and disappointed. Maybe you didn't get the promotion. Maybe you didn't get the job that you applied for. But I just really feel that disappointment is surrounding us. But when you look at this, you can put disappointment aside because we have something called hope. And our hope is not found under the Christmas tree. Our hope is not found in a job. Our hope is not found in things. But our hope is found in a person. And that person is Jesus. You see, as we go into Christmas, Hope was born on Christmas Day. When Jesus came to the earth, he came to bring us hope. Hope not in things, but in a life with him. We 
need to realize that hope isn't some kind of a wish or a sprinkle of fairy dust or anything like that. It's in a person who loves us. He loves me. He loves you. And he loves all the aspects of our everyday life. He is the one who speaks hope and life into our lives. So if you are faced with disappointment and you are faced with discouraged and discouragement and you have been let down, I want to encourage you this Christmas season, realize that hope was born in a manger. And I, when I started thinking about the whole story of Mary and Joseph and that in fact, the, even the, the title of our Christmas play for the children is Christmas hope and we're going to postpone that and do that the first Sunday in January because I still believe that we need to hear that message of Christmas hope. Christmas hope goes together because hope was born when Jesus was born in that manger because he was born so that he could die for our sins to make the sacrifice for us so that we can have hope eternal and that hope eternal is in life eternal to be in heaven with him one day and when i look at all the things around me guess what yes we do face disappointments but when i look at that and i realize that he has overcome yes i'm gonna face trouble i'm gonna face disappointments but that's not where I put my hope. That's not where I put my trust. I do. You do. We all have to put our hope and our trust in Jesus. I have another scripture for you, and it says this. It's from Romans chapter 5, verse 5, and it says, And hope does not disappoint, because the love of God has been poured out within our hearts through the Holy Spirit who was given to us. What a comfort that is to know that we can have hope in Him. And so hope doesn't disappoint. Guess what? Jesus never disappoints. He never disappoints us. He will never fail us because He said He's always there with us. And because of His love, when he was born that day, and then when he died on the cross and paid the price and the payment for our sins so that we could be with him in heaven one day. Then after he died, we know that on the third day he rose from the dead. That's what gives us our hope. And he is right now in heaven with God the Father interceding for us. But he didn't leave us alone. He sent his Holy Spirit. And like this it says, it, his love has been poured out within our hearts through the Holy Spirit. And I don't know about you, but that kind of makes the disappointments fade a little bit in comparison to know that I always have hope in Him and that that hope does not disappoint. So I want to encourage you today as you go throughout this week and even maybe getting together with families and, and things and, and you're not going to be able to do that this year, you may be disappointed. Find the hope, the hope of Christmas. Like I said, it's not found in presents. It's not found in gifts. It's not found in jobs. It's not found in any of those things. Hope is found in a person, and that person is Jesus. If you don't know that hope, I want to introduce you to him. That can be the best present that you will ever receive is to unwrap the love of Jesus and to invite him into your heart and life. I'm praying for you. I miss you guys. I love you. And I want you to know that, that I'm here during this times. And yes, we will face disappointment, but he said not to be discouraged because he has already overcome the world. I want to pray with you. Father, we just come to you right now. We just thank you that we can put all our hope and our trust in you. 
Now, Father, right now, I just pray if there's anyone out there that has not put their hope in you, that they will put their hope and trust in you, knowing that that hope never disappoints. Father, I ask that you would just help us throughout this season. May we look to you and to what your son did. At Christmas, he was born in a manger so that he could die and pay the price for our sins so that one day we can be with him in heaven. And we just thank you for the gift of hope that is found in Jesus. And now if you're out there and you say, Pastor Angie, I don't know Jesus. I want to introduce you to him. And I'm going to pray with you. And you can invite Jesus into your heart and to your life and to make it the best Christmas ever so that you can have hope in him. If that's you out there, then I encourage you right where you are, pray this prayer with me. Dear God, I come to you right now and I realize that I am a sinner and I've put my hope and trust in things in this world. Right now, God, and you can all pray with me, say, Dear Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. Wash me clean. I receive the hope that comes in knowing you. And I receive the gift of salvation. I know that you were born in a manger, that you died on a cross, that you rose from the dead, and now you're seated with the Father. And you sent us the gift of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for coming into my life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Guys, I hope you have a blessed Christmas this week. And I want to tell you about a little something special. I will be doing a special family Christmas devotion from my home this Wednesday night at 7 o'clock on our BVPHC Facebook page. I encourage you, as a family, make sure you sit down and watch this and worship and come alongside. I have something very, very special planned for you, and I don't want you to miss it. Have a great day in Jesus and realize that your hope is in Him. Be blessed.